Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Thanks for checking out this video. My name is Chris. We talk all about koi ponds and water gardens and waterfalls and aquatic plants and fish and the whole bit here on this channel. So if you're new to the channel, please check out my videos. I have a ton of videos here with a lot of useful information for you. Um, if you're a subscriber, again, thank you very much for your support. I really appreciate it and I hope to uh, provide you as much good content as I can. Okay. Today's video is about algae and controlling algae in your pond. So we're going to talk about a whole bunch of different stuff here and, um, you know, hopefully give you a good idea of why algae is growing and how to control it a little bit. So again, <laughs> Algae is very common, okay? It's a plant. It is a plant in our pond. We have to understand that. Um, algae is gonna love sunlight, okay, and nutrients. It's just like a plant in your garden, right? What do the plants in your garden need to grow, right? Well, they need nutrients in the soil, they need sunlight for photosynthesis, okay? And they need water, right? And if we can provide nutrients, sunlight, and water, our plants in our garden are gonna grow beautifully. So, that being said, algae's the same. It's a plant, okay? It needs water. Well, we've got water in our pond, right? Um, it needs sunlight. We can, you know, have sun and it needs nutrients. So, what are the best ways to controlling algae? Well, we need to try to eliminate those, you know, water, sunlight, and nutrients, all right? Well, obviously we can't eliminate the water, right? Because then we don't have a pond. Um, but we can try to limit the amount of sunlight that enters into the water, and we can try to limit the amount of nutrients that are in the water, all right? So how do we do this, all right? So there's two ways, okay, that we can go about controlling algae. One is chemically, and one is more naturally, all right? Now, I'm gonna say straight off the top, I hate using chemical algicides. All right, I do not use them. I don't want to use them. I do not like them. All right, why? Well, a lot of them are, for one thing, a quick fix. All right, we, we have algae growing in a pond. We add the chemical. It may help to knock the algae back a little bit. It might help to kill it off. The water may clear up a little bit but it's a quick fix. It's going to come back. So why does the algae come back? Well, we still have the nutrients in the water. We still have the sunshine, right? And we still have water. Okay. So these algicides are basically a lot of times a quick fix um, and not solving the problem that's causing the algae in the first place. All right. Um, the other thing is, some of these algicides can be extremely toxic, okay? If they are overdosed, they can kill your fish, all right? Now, um, what a lot of them do is also um, suck the oxygen out of the pond. So if sometimes if you read some of these bottles, they will tell you to make sure you have an abundance of oxygen in the water. Be it, you know, keep your pumps running, your water uh, falls going. Uh, if you have an aeration system, you know, air pumps, keep them all running. Um, because adding this chemical into the pond can suck a lot of that oxygen out. If it sucks the oxygen out of the pond, your fish are in trouble. Okay, now I had a um, person call me a couple years back. Um, <laughs> he had a pond, I would say a four or 5,000 gallon pond, really nice size pond, and he had about 30 to 40 nice koi in the pond. Um, he had some algae, the water wasn't clear. He went to a local store. Um, they said, you need an algicide. And when they asked him, you know, how big is your pond, he thought it was around 10,000 gallons. So he bought the product. 
he went home and he treated his 4,000, 5,000 gallon pond for 10,000 gallons, all right? Um, the next morning, just about all his fish were dead, all right? Um, yeah, and that's not the first time that that's, I've ever seen that happen, okay? I, I hear a lot of horror stories about it. So if I have a choice to not use chemicals, I am absolutely not going to use chemicals, all right? Um, so, what, again, what we need to understand, all right, is that we need to try to limit the amount of nutrients and sunlight, okay, that um, is available for the algae. Now, <laughs> the trick is, okay, you have fish in the water, right? The more fish you have, the more waste they produce. The more waste they produce, the more um, nutrients are in the water for the algae. In a balanced pond, okay, which means um, the nitrogen cycle. If you're not familiar with the nitrogen cycle, check out my video on the nitrogen cycle. Um, it's basically um, a, a cycle that occurs in your pond, a chemical process in which bacteria that you grow in your filter turns ammonia and nitrogen trites, which are toxic and produced from um, um, decaying organic matter and fish waste and are toxic to your fish, and it turns, those bacteria turns those two into nitrates, and nitrates are far less toxic for your fish, okay? So it does this chemical process that turns two toxins into something not so toxic. However, the nitrates, that your, your end product, is used as plant fertilizer, okay? So the more fish you have in the pond, the more they're pooping, right? The more they're put, adding nutrients into the water, and the more bacteria you have in your filters that turn that um, toxic waste into nitrates, which is then plant fertilizer, okay? So our end product is plant fertilizer, all right? Now, the ways to control nitrates um, easily is by doing water changes. And a way to eliminate a lot of the, tox the, the uh, nutrients in the water is by doing water changes, okay? If we are pumping out a lot of nutrients and replacing it with clean, fresh water without the nutrients, all right, um, what we were trying to do is starve that our algae out, okay? Um, so that's an idea. Now, the other thing that we can do naturally is to add plants into our pond. Water lilies, water hyacinths, um, parrot's feather, all kinds of plants, okay? These plants are going to feed on the same nutrients in the water that algae does. The difference is algae is a little single cell, you know, <laughs> tiny little thing, okay? And, you know, your other plants are bigger. They're higher up in the food chain, so to speak. They are going to want to absorb all the nutrients out of the water first, all right? And by doing so, they're going to starve out the algae, all right? Now, as your plants grow, things like water lilies, water hyacinths, all these plants that float on the surface of the pond, um, not only absorb nutrients, but they're gonna provide a cover and shade in the pond, right? When your water lilies grow, you have all these big leaves on the surface, and the sunlight is not penetrating through them into the water. So it cuts down on the photosynthesis of the algae growth as well, okay? Now, one little, little curveball here we're going to throw you is the fact that if you have a koi pond, right, with large koi, a lot of times the koi can be very destructive to the plants. So the plants are not going to grow very well, sometimes not at all, okay? So we can't rely on those plants to absorb the nutrients in the water and to eliminate the sunshine that's, um, you know, getting into our pond. So 
in that case, then we need to rely on water changes. Okay? Um, now, <laughs> so there's a whole balance, as you can see, you know, that we're trying to, to um, build <laughs> in our pond, okay, between the fish, right, the filtration, the nitrates, um, you know, the nutrients in the water, and sunlight, all right. Um, sometimes this solution is not you know, done overnight, okay? Sometimes it takes time and it takes patience. I know nobody likes to look at green water in your pond, all right? Um, however, green water is not always unhealthy or, you know, it's dangerous to your fish. It's not. Sometimes the fish like it more. They're actually protected and covered more, okay? Um, <laughs> They're not as visible to predators as they are in clear water, all right? But it's just not nice to look at, all right? And sometimes having really green water can also affect the pH of the pond because as the algae is going through photosynthesis and it's absorbing, basically what photosynthesis does is it absorbs carbon dioxide out of the water and it produces oxygen into the water, all right? Um, now, at night, when the sun is not shining and photosynthesis is not occurring, it's the reverse reaction. The plants actually absorb the oxygen, all right, and put out carbon dioxide. Now, the problem in, lies within the fact that when the plants put out carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide combines with the water molecules and forms car carbonic acid. Carbonic acid, right, it's an acid in your pond, can affect the pH, all right? It can really bring that pH down. It, the water becomes more acidic. So, um, you know, just something to be aware of in, in ponds that are, you know, heavy green water, all right? Um, so, yeah, water changes, okay? Um, adding plants to our pond, if we can, all right, definitely helps, um, you know, if we don't have those koi that are gonna rip them apart. Um, but yeah, water changes, plants, shade, um, you know, provides the shade, plants provide the shade and absorb those nutrients out of the water. Um, now, getting that nice balance in your pond that you have enough plants to absorb the amount of nutrients that are being produced by the fish and, and the biological filtration takes some time, right? But it, it can happen, definitely. Um, now, sometimes we get hairy, stringy algae growing on the liners of our pond, the rocks of the pond and stuff, okay? Um, that can be a little harder to eliminate too. Um, sometimes for that, um, see I don't put rock and gravel in my pond. Um, all my ponds are just plain liner with a four inch bottom drain, so all the sediment just goes right out, okay? Um, but if I start to get some hairy, slimy algae on the pond liner, sometimes adding some salt to the pond can definitely help um, to control some of that algae, you know, growing on the liner. Now, also, larger koi, you know, once you have koi that are nice 12 inches or bigger, all right, um, if you have enough of them, man, they will clean that liner because they're constantly picking at the algae all over the pond on the liner and stuff. And they keep that hairy, stringy algae from growing. Okay, they really, they're really good at being farmers like and, and cleaning, keeping that liner nice and clean and controlled. Once the whole pond is balanced and everything is set though, it's really not an issue. The other place where I find a lot of hairy, stringy algae a lot of times is on waterfalls or in stream beds. And the reason for this is basically really simple, okay? We've got rocks, right? We've got a substrate, a surface um, that's exposed to the hot sun, right? And we've got water with all the nutrients pouring over that rock constantly. We don't have any fish on it, right? We, don't, we can't put, you know, shaded plants over top of it, right? It's a waterfall. So the algae can grow uh, rather quickly. Um, so a couple things with this too. Again, some salt, 
right, can help control some of that. We can physically remove it, you know, just pull it off the rocks and clean it. Another little trick that I've told my clients to do quite often is, you know, especially in the summertime, um, when it's really hot out, you get a nice hot sunny afternoon, shut the waterfall off for a couple hours, just a couple hours, and let that hot sun just bake and dry up those rocks. If it's any algae growing on those rocks, it's gonna it's gonna burn off, right? It's gonna dry up and, and the sun's just gonna to burn it up, okay? If you do that once a week, right? it's gonna help control that algae growth. Don't wait till it's so hairy, stringy, and covered with algae, you know, and then, okay? So if you do like a regular maintenance on that, that's great. The only thing is if it's really hot out and you're shutting your pond off for a couple hours, make sure we have another you know, air pump or air system or something running in the pond to provide oxygen for the fish during those hot days, okay? Especially the bigger the fish you have, the more fish you have on, in hot days. Um, warm water holds less dissolved oxygen than cold water, so we definitely need to keep oxygen running in our pond, okay? So that's something to be um, aware of there. Um, as far as, again, you know, putting chemicals in, I, I really try to avoid it. Um, it's just not a successful thing um, <laughs> that I see. Um, now, the other little cheat, basically, is to put a UV sterilizer, a UV light on your pond. Um, they're very simple to install. They go simply in line in the plumbing. You pump water in one end. There's an ultraviolet bulb in the unit. Um, the water passes through the bulb, around the bulb, right? The UV that's um, emitted from the bulb disrupts the DNA in the algae cells and it basically, you know, kills the algae and then it just recirculates back. Um, really easy. Every pond I build, I put a UV light on, done. We don't have to worry about chemicals, we don't have to worry about anything. Now, that UV light is basically only gonna keep your water clear, okay? It's not gonna kill any of the algae that's growing on the rocks, in the pond, the liner, or the waterfall. And the reason for that is that algae is not being exposed to the light inside that tube, okay? Now I have a whole nother video, again, on, on uh, ultraviolet lights on UV lights so please check that out um, but that's definitely a great option for you all right all right well thank you very much for watching I hope it helped you out and we'll see you again soon take care thanks bye